Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about Grover's algorithm. Okay, so remember the problem that we are trying to solve. We are given a table with capital N entries. We think of um, capital N as 2 to the little n. And then we are given a function, you know, this, this, this table is given to us in the form of a function which maps 0 through n minus 1 to 0, 1. It's a Boolean function. And what we want to do is find an x such that f of x equal to 1. We're going to assume we have the hardest case, when, you know, the case in which there's exactly one such x where f of x equal to 1. And the, the question is, how many times do we have to evaluate f of x? Okay, and of course, classically, we have to do this at least capital N over two times, and we are aiming to do it, you know, solve this problem with, with only square root of capital N evaluations of f of x. Okay, so it turns out that, that the algorithm to do this, the quantum algorithm to do this, has, has two different primitives that it's going to rely on. So the first primitive that, that it relies on is what's called phase inversion. So let's say that um, so so let's say that um, f of x star equal to one. So that's the unique x such that f of x equal to one, right? This is this is the item that we are searching for. And let's say that we start with some superposition sum over all x of alpha x x. So let me draw a picture of it. So let's say that this is x and that's alpha sub x okay so so let's say alpha sub x is just some function like this you know it's a d this is the superposition and there's x star okay in phase inversion what we want to do is take this superposition so this is what phase inversion means we want to take this superposition. Okay. So, so that's that's what it what it looked like. Except now what we want to do is this was x star. We want to we want to take you know, so so we want we want our we want our new superposition to look like this blue superposition where where x star gets its 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 amplitude multiplied by minus 1 so what what i mean by this is on the phase inversion the new superposition is sum over all x not equal to x star of alpha x x minus alpha sub x star x star right so instead of a plus alpha sub x star you get a minus alpha sub x star so i'm going to assume for the purposes of this video that we can implement phase inversion so we'll see how to actually design a circuit that that does this in the next video okay the, there's one other primitive that we are going to need which is inversion about the mean so what's inversion about the mean so again let's say that we have a superposition summation of all x alpha x x so again this is our diagram that's x alpha sub x and we're given some such some such uh, superposition now Corresponding to this superposition, we can we can say um, what it's um, um, you know what the mean value of alpha sub x is. So take the average value of alpha sub x. So maybe that's something like this. So that's the average value of alpha sub x. Let's let the average be mu. So now what we're going to do is flip everything about this this mean line so 
So what, whatever the amplitude of x used to be, if it was below mu, then you reflect it and make it as much above mu as it used to be below. So the new amplitude is going to is going to follow this this blue curve. Okay, so so in other words, the amplitude of x instead of being alpha sub x, it's two mu minus alpha sub x. Okay, so why is it two mu minus alpha sub x? So let's see, if it, if it used to be at alpha sub x, what you do is, so from alpha sub x, you go to what? Well, the difference between mu and alpha sub x is, is, is mu minus alpha sub x. So this is how much below mu alpha sub x is, let's say. Let's say that's positive. So now you flip it around, you put it as much above mu as it used to be below. So the new amplitude is mu plus mu minus alpha sub x, which is 2 mu minus alpha sub x. Okay, so that's, that's this operator called inversion about the mean. So now let's see, so again we are going to see in the next video how to implement this transformation. So there's a quantum circuit that will carry this out for us. But for now, what we care about is Given these two operations, how do we actually solve the search problem? Okay, so so this is our problem. We are given an given an a Boolean function which is which is one for exactly one value of x. Find this value of x. Okay, so so we first start with an equal superposition over all the n items. Then we do an inversion, a phase inversion. So, so x star, the marked value, we make it, you know, instead of having amplitude 1 over square root n, it now has amplitude minus 1 over square root n. Now the next step, what we are going to do is an inversion about the mean. So what's the mean of this superposition? Well, the mean is pretty close to 1 over square root of n. So now when we do an inversion about the mean, all these amplitudes more or less stay the same. So they go, you know, they were just a little bit above the mean, so now they become just a little below the mean. But what happens to x star is more dramatic because it used to be roughly 2 over square root of n below the mean. So now it swings over and it goes two over, roughly 2 over square root n above the mean. But the mean was already roughly 1 over square root n, so, so the amplitude of x star becomes roughly 3 over square root of n. Very close to 3 over square root n. Okay, so the net effect is this sequence of two steps grows the amplitude of x star by 2 over square root of n, roughly. And it reduces everything else just by a tiny amount. Okay, but now, what happens if we do this again? Well, if, if we do this again, in the next step, when we do a phase inversion, this now, x star now goes, has an amplitude of minus 3 over square root of n. When we do an inversion about the mean, well, it's 4, times, four over square root of n below the mean, and so it'll go 4 over square root n above the mean, which means it goes roughly to 5 over square root of n. Okay, so in the next step, if we, if we repeat this, this sequence of two steps, we go to about, about 5 over square root n above the mean. All the other amplitudes, well, they go down a little bit more, but they still stay very close to 1 over square root of n. And this keeps going on. Next step, we go up to 7 over square root n roughly, 9 over square root n, so on. If you go all the way up to 1 over square root 2, and now if you make a measurement, the chance that we see x star is the square of 1 over square root 2, so we see x star with probability half. 
That's Grover's algorithm. Okay, so how long does it take? How many, how many such iterations does it take? Well, we seem to be increasing the amplitude by roughly 2 over square root n each time. So how many, how many iterations does it take to, to make that, to, for the amplitude to grow all the way up to a constant? It's, it's, it's about square root of n, maybe square root n over 2, maybe square root n over 4, but that's roughly what it is. Now, of course, this analysis was bogus because, because of course, all these amplitudes keep decreasing from 1 over square root n each time we do this inversion about the mean, which, which also implies that when we do the inversion about the mean, you know, we, when, we, when we do the inversion about the mean, the amplitude of x star doesn't quite go up by 2 over square root n each step but it goes up by smaller and smaller amounts as we go along. Okay, so, but this is not a, this is not a big deal. This is, you know, it, it goes down only by a small amount. You know, this, 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 uh, this effect is sort of small. And by the time the amplitude of x star gets to 1 over square root 2, actually these, you know, the, these, the amplitude of everything else doesn't decrease too much below 1 over square root n. So, so let's, uh, let's try to figure this out. What's the, uh, what's the amplitude of the, of, of the, of the rest of these, um, you know, of the, of the rest of the entries when the needle x star has amplitude 1 over square root 2? Well, at this point, the remaining n minus 1 elements have amplitude 1 over square root 2 and so roughly their, their amplitude is not 1 over square root n but 1 over square root 2n. So now at this point how much, how much improvement are we making per step? So remember what happens. So our picture is this we had uh, there's x. We know that that the amplitude of everything else is above one over square root two n, right? It never falls below this, which means that whatever the you know whatever the the amplitude of the needle was, when we do this inversion about the mean, well the mean is 1 over square root n, 1 over square root 2n above the above 0 and then when we flip it, flip it about the mean it goes to a length of whatever its original length was plus 1 over square root 2n above the mean and therefore the increase in its length is 2 times 1 over square root 2n which is square root 2 over n. Okay, so so now if it if you are if you're increasing it by square root 2 over square root n, then how many steps does it take before you reach 1 over square root 2? Well, the answer is clear. It's it's uh it's 1 over square root 2 divided by square root 2 over square root n, which is square root n divided by 2. So that's, that's an upper bound on the number of steps required for Grover's algorithm. Okay, now, of course, in all of this, I have not told you how to implement each step, but this is what we'll do in the next video.